Okay, let's uh, let's come to order, you guys. Uh, all these are correct, I think, after just glancing up here. I think that's right. It's a little hard to read, but just, just ignore that scratch there. Um, the first one's nice and easy. You're welcome, Sonny. Okay, you like that one? Uh, no need to solve for y necessarily. Obviously, on C, we don't even have something that can be expressed as one single function of x. So, um, so the first one, maybe it's not obvious, but if you were to graph this in polar coordinates, it would be a line, a vertical line. For part b, it's a line of some kind. And for part c, anyone know what that is? It's a circle, yeah. Not centered at the origin, though. You can subtract 4x on both sides, complete the square, you know. Don't worry about it. Okay. But one could. And then for part d, we're just converting a set of coordinates. And remember that the polar coordinates, unlike Cartesian coordinates, polar coordinates are not unique, right? So did everyone glance through that PowerPoint and get a review on all this stuff yesterday? You remember the things up in this box? And okay. Um, so please, someone else, give me another. This is correct, but give me another set of coordinates, too. And let's list a couple, maybe. Yeah, ratchet. Two and That'll do. Maybe that's the one that most people came up with. I don't know. Uh, you got another one, Kathy? I like it. Okay, so the point is that they're not unique. Okay, so if you come up with an infinite number, every single person in this room can come up with another one that's different than the ones we've already written if we wanted. Yeah. So, for the, uh, I don't know what to call it, the, the, the first half of the coordinate. That's R. Mm -hmm. uh, for the R. Yeah, it can be negative. It can be negative? Yeah, okay. yeah. So you get two, well, I think you get Yeah, so R is allowed to be negative, and we think of that as being, so, um, in fact, actually, it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit, I think, unfortunate that we write them R comma, comma theta. I think it makes more sense to do theta comma R, because theta is usually, when we're doing these functions, considered to be like the independent variable, R is the dependent variable. So usually, I, how I think about locating myself in the coordinate plane using these instructions is I think I turn toward pi over 6 first. So if this is the positive x-axis, and that's the negative x-axis, and this is the positive and the negative y-axis. Then I'm turning to pi over 6, and then what does negative 2 tell me to do? It says walk two units backwards, right? And here I am, right? Or the other instructions get me the same place, is that true? In fact, yeah, they do, right? Let's try 2 negative 5 pi over 6. That means turn clockwise 5 pi over 6 radians, and then walk two units forward. That, there I am here again, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, right, forget now we move around. So is that clear now? Um, yeah, the negative R values are okay. I think, yeah. That's a little weird. Negative two or this is positive Well, I mean, I think we before, let's forget about polar coordinates for a second. Wouldn't you agree that negative root three, negative one is, again, this is the origin, and that's the positive y axis, positive x axis, isn't it over here? Okay. Right, you, you agree? Like, forget polar coordinates for a second. It's negative root three, it's in the third quadrant. Um, is that enough to say? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and then uh, anything else you want to talk about at all before we launch into doing calculus with polar functions? You're remembering back now, I forget exactly what we need to do in homework, but um, how to graph a Lima song and how to, you know, think about all those things. That rose curves, how many pedals they have, where do you start sweeping counterclockwise across, okay. Um, okay. If you do, or if you are starting, there's, there's, a, there's a page in the book too that re reviews what all those things are and about those graphs and stuff. You can kind of look through them again. Um, I love talking about those, but I really, I, I probably shouldn't spend time uh, too much up front saying we want to we make sure we focus on calculus. Um, if we have time at the end, and I don't think today's lesson is super long, we could we could draw a few cardioids and whatever else you want to do, just for fun, right? Just to review. Um, but yeah, it is true in polar coordinates you can get really uh, beautiful things, really beautiful things. 
like this crazy curve up here. Right? You type this in your calculator and you get this picture. Pretty, right? So um, recall for a moment, it's not very uh, distant a recollection for us, I hope, because we just did it, that um, dy dx is dy dt over dx dt. Wait, what? Are we doing polar coordinates? Well, let's just think about it for a second. Okay. Um, if that's true, and we have uh, the definitions that I wrote on the board in the warm-up today earlier, then we can express this in polar coordinates as the following. Instead, we're going to think of our independent variable as being theta, right? But you could think about that as theta taking the role of t. dy d theta over dx d theta, right? Where theta is playing the role of t. And dy d theta is, well, what is y? What is y if we're in polar coordinates? Isn't it r sine theta if theta is playing the role of t? And likewise on the bottom, isn't x r cosine theta? So what I'm actually asking us to do is to take the derivative of r sine theta on the top with respect to theta, right? Keeping in mind that we're going to be dealing with some curve where r is a function of theta, right? So you might be like, okay, I understood up to this step right here. I'm good. I'm good. I understand. But then what happened over here? What did happen? What did I do to get the last? This is messy, by the way, right? And there's just no way around it. It's not like the, I'm going to clean this up in the next slide or something. No, it's just always this messy. Sorry. What did I do in the numerator and in the, and in the denominator? Oh, yeah. The product rule. And the re right, so this is uh, the derivative of the first with times the second plus the, derivative of the, the first times the derivative of the second, right? And then likewise on the bottom. Okay, because again, I want to think of r uh, as being some function of theta, right? It depends on theta. Okay, so that's kind of the ticket here. You want to find in the coordinate plane on a polar curve dy dx, that is the rate of change with the y coordinate with respect to the x coordinate. Then here it is. There you go. And let's just keep in mind that r is some function of theta. So in practice, th these r primes and r's, which look really cute and tidy right here, are actually going to be terrible. Those r primes, it's like the derivative of some function that I gave you. I gave you. So let's. Let's try it here for this Limasson, for instance, okay? So finding dy dx is, is not trivial, actually. <laughs> In polar coordinates, finding dy dx is somewhat complicated, right? So just because I'm still forgetting that formula on the previous slide, I'm going to maybe do it from, in fir from first principles here. I'm going to think of dy d theta, uh, or rather, um, you know, d, d d theta of r sine theta over d d theta of r cosine theta. Let me actually do it out piecemeal here. Okay, so where r is this whole thing, right? Both of these r's. So the derivative of the first, that is the derivative of this whole thing. What is the derivative of 2 minus 3 sine theta? Well, it's negative 3 cosine theta. All right, so that's our r prime times sine theta then, plus just this thing, r, times the derivative of sine, which is cosine. All right, that should agree with our formula on the previous page. Like I said, this is just, I, like, I'm not going to, like, break out on the next slide and give you, like, a shortcut. It's always this terrible, okay? It is always this terrible. It used to be that, like, finding dy dx was something easy. Oh, here it's not so much. Kind of makes sense too, though, because we're in polar coordinates for goodness' sake. Like, why are you even asking about the slope of y with respect to x? Okay. Um, and then down here we're doing the same thing. So we get negative three cosine theta 
get a, a minus sign there. How about? Oh, oops. I didn't mean that. Whoa. Everything's fine. Is that, a, is that agree? I mean, we'll try and clean this up a little bit, but there's not a ton we can do. Let's see what we can do. Um, I mean, I see there's like a negative three cosine sine in the numerator, and then another negative three cosine sine. So maybe we make it two minus six sine theta cosine theta in the numerator. Does that work? I mean, that's going to benefit us uh, benefit us as we go forward. Um, and the denominator we get two. Is that a? Uh, three <coughs> sine squared. I mean, you clean it up. You can minus three cosine squared plus two. No, minus two sine theta. Negative three. Oh, I need a two cosine theta here. Yeah, thank you. I was looking over my algebra here. Two cosine theta. I'm just trying to avoid having to write this again, but yes, yeah, so we get two cosine theta from that. We get a negative three sine cosine, and then another negative three sine cosine. Is that okay? All right, I think the numerator is right. Is the denominator okay? Three sine squared positive. Negative three cosine squared minus two sine theta. I think that works, and that's I don't know. We can clean. We can maybe. You want to factor out a cosine on the top? You want to? There are a couple things we could do, but I mean this is probably okay. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, uh, why are they putting? Isn't the denominator r prime cosine theta minus r sine theta? <coughs> yeah. 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 I just put the. It's just. You want to put the minus here or here? I, mean, I don't know. Oh, okay. I see. Is that okay? Yeah. Never mind. Okay. yeah. I actually don't really like memorizing the formula on the previous page because okay. it's not, it's like ugly to me. Um, I'd rather just think it through each time from first principles and take the product rule and numerator and dot denominator. But, um, you know, whatever. You can memorize that and then you would still get this answer, I hope. Did you get the same answer? Yeah. All right, and then how do we compute the slope at these values? At 2 comma pi, <coughs> how would we compute the slope there? Let's do one of them at least by hand. How about? You know, we can do the others. Yeah. In this case, like, it would be easier to use the bottom one, right? Because... Use the bottom one? Use the what? Like, um, the, the longer form, because you have R in it, and you can just replace R with 2. No. That's like asking uh, if you want the slope on a line I believe that's the confusion. Is this the polar or are these polar coordinates or are these? These are polar coordinates, right? R comma theta. Okay. Um, so but R is changing. I don't see an R up here anywhere. Do you? Yeah, R is Oh, that is different R. This is R of theta, right? This is not like a fixed R value. This is R of theta which changes depending on what theta is, right? So, it's like, it's, uh, like I said, it would be the mistake of being like, someone asks you to calculate the derivative of um, of some function uh, back first semester, y equals three x squared minus x or something like that, and they said find the find the find the slope of the tangent at uh, two comma whatever the uh, what is that two squared is four it's twelve minus two is ten. Um, so it's find the slope of 210, and then you said, like, okay, well, first step, I know x and y are 2 and 10, so let's plug those in. No, yeah. Hold up. Wait a second. No, x and y are things that change. Let's compute the derivative. Yeah, just, okay, so just, data. yeah, just be careful with thinking that through. Yeah. So. Wait, so no, it's, okay, so let's just, we can confirm that, in fact, the person who asked this question is right by plugging pi into this original equation up at the top. Let's see, do we actually get 2? 
we plug pi in? Yeah, we do. Okay, so good job, person. Okay, but all we need in this formula is, is theta. It's all it depends on, right? So plug in uh, pi, everyone, where, and we'll have the dy dx, the slope of y with respect to x, right? Plugging in pi, and, and actually the ones I have for you here are actually not too bad, even though this derivative, the form of this derivative is terrible looking, right? All of these things kind of zero out for the ones I've given you, the, the ones I happen to have given you, right? So um, when theta equals pi, let's see if we can do this here. Which things go away in this formula? Anything that has a, a sign goes away, so, but we do have uh, two minus zero, okay, that'll all go away. Uh, this will be zero down here, minus three, minus zero, right? So, hey, that wasn't too bad, two thirds, two, negative two thirds, excuse me. All right, that wasn't too bad. Okay, that's the first one. When theta is equal to zero radians, uh, something's, oh, I'm sorry. I just plugged in pi, no, I, was, I was already plugging in zero. Some of those negative signs, actually I think it still works though. This is negative two. And this is positive three. Okay, so it's still negative two thirds. Though. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll check on the picture here in a second. Let's make sure we're okay with this. Cosine of pi is negative one squared is one times negative three. So we get a negative three down here, and we get this. we're just plugging stuff in here. Why are we messing up? And then negative two on top, right? And all the things that have sine go away. So I think we're okay with that now. Positive two thirds. We'll check on the picture here in a second and see if we're right. Um, a zero. That's the one I was computing earlier. Without, I thought I was getting ahead of myself here. Uh, zero plus minus three. Still minus three minus zero. So that's ne that's negative two thirds. Um, let's, we can do the other ones here by hand too. What happens if pi over two? And a three pi over two, which things go away there? Cosine goes away everywhere on those, so that makes that easier. For pi over two, sine of pi over two. Is all right, this goes away always. This term here uh, for all four of the points I'm I'm giving you at least, not for other points. But um, so what do we get overall? Doesn't matter. Okay, and three pi over two. Is also zero, right? Is the numerator zero? Okay, that wasn't very interesting. Let's see these on the picture. There's the first one at pi radians. Right, we're sweeping along here, and when we get to pi radians, we're pointed in this direction on the curve at uh, two comma pi. Do you agree that? Think, don't stop thinking about calculus for a second. Do you agree that this is where we are, right, at the point two comma pi in polar coordinates, positive two in the pi direction? So that's where we live, is right here. And the slope, does that, can we convince you that the slope is positive, two thirds? There, well, that looks like that's reasonable. And there's uh, negative two thirds, does that look reasonable when we're at zero, theta equals zero? And the other two are there and there, right? Cool, all right, so I think we're, I think we're in business. Uh, your calculator does a great job of approximating this too, so you can check and see that we're right. If you put your calculator in polar mode and graph the Slimus on, feel free to do it. And, and, and a good uh, a good theta min and max would be on this one, maybe zero to two pi, right? If you're, if you're using your window, okay. And then if you go to your calculate menu, um, if you go to your calculate men menu, now you have some various options again. One of them is dy dx, and see if you don't get what we said what we would get here, and that's two thirds, right? Positive two thirds. So again, feel free to use your calculator to try this out too and confirm what we're doing is correct. <laughs> we're not going too crazy here. And uh, and then step uh, once again, kind of step back and appreciate the fact that we are, um, you know, we're finding slopes of polar curves. So that's pretty sweet. Right? Anything else you want to say about that? That's, that's all I have to say about derivative. Um, yeah, we won't really worry about the second derivative. Um, yeah. All right, then the only, the only other thing I want to say something about here a little bit today is, is length of curves. Um, and then we've kind of divided this section into two days. I'd love to say start, yeah, we could actually start talking about area. But we've, the next thing ma major is kind of a big topic, though, is we want to talk about area inside of polar curves. So we're going to save that for tomorrow. But I think we can hit length of curve 
today. Um, this is the formula. Again, I'm, I'm putting it up here without any justification, but I think you should try to justify this using um, the previous. It's, it doesn't feel like something very close to what we've done. Like maybe, maybe you could prove that this is a, in fact equivalent to our other formulas for arc length that we've shown you in rectangular and in and in um, parametric coordinates. It is in fact the same thing. But it's a little exotic, right? So alpha and beta are our beginning and ending like angle that we're sweeping between. Okay. So if you want to find the length of that entire Limasson that we just looked at, we'd go from alpha equals zero to beta equals two pi, right? That would give you the length of that entire Limasson. Where r, again, r is the entire function. And, and again, we're gonna just hand this stuff almost always to a calculator, right? Because just like we've been doing with all the other arc lengths. Because taking the integral of stuff under messy functions under a square root is usually not a nice thing. So we usually just outsource this to the calculator. Drd theta is the derivative careful of r, our function uh, r of theta with respect to theta. So that's like the easy, that's the easy derivative. It's not like the thing we were just computing. It's not dy dx. And r is, again, not just like one number. It's, it's the whole function r of theta. So let's try finding the length of this cardioid, r equals 1 minus cosine theta. And um, trying to think how much prior knowledge you have on this, but is it, maybe it's not obvious. I mean, I assume that we have a calculator in this particular situation because in a minute we're going to use it, right, to actually evaluate this integral and give an approximate value. So assuming we have a calculator, you could even investigate this curve under the microscope of your calculator graph. Um, but is it obvious to you that this is formed, one exact path is formed from 0 to 2 pi? It's not always obvious that that's true, but you can maybe make a guess that that's going to be true here. Um, you could plug in, if you didn't happen to have a calculator, so you could plug in a few values to verify that that's true. But alpha and beta need to be uh, uh, 0 and 2 pi here. So that might take some convincing. In fact, um, I might give you another example in a second that has a, uh, just for fun, I'll make one up that, that is not as obvious. So maybe it's maybe you think it's obvious, though. It's not necessarily obvious, but. So I'm claiming the length of the curve there in that picture is 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 2 pi, of the square root of a whole bunch of stuff here. Right? The drip, the, we want just r in here, 1 minus cosine theta squared, plus it says dr d theta. So that's the easy one. So that's sine theta squared d theta. And then, like I said, um, we can approximate that on our calculator because you might be able to pull some tricks to get this, but um, yeah, we're just, we don't know any really good ones, so off the top of our head, maybe so. There's, I'm trying to, we could clean it up a little bit in there, right? One. So someone just mash this into your calculator and see what you get. I, I'm just curious to see if this would clean up at all. Um, 0 to 2 pi to be 1 minus 2 cosine minus 2 cosine excuse me. Plus 1 yeah so I think this is well, I don't have like a great way to the inside does clean up to this if you work it all out but that still doesn't Maybe help us immediately either, even though there's a lot nicer looking. It's pretty clean. It's pretty clean. Is it? What does it come out to be? Is it exactly eight? All right. So maybe there is some secret way that we're we're missing that we could actually do that integral. I don't know without without using our calculator. But yeah. Not the integral part, but the bounds part. Mm -hmm. um, do you just find when? Do you find it like when theta equals zero? Yeah, how can we how can we talk through how to find those? Um, it does take. I mean, I'm trying to think how how I think it through. I, I just am familiar with the curves, and I, maybe you should be too a little bit. Um, try some values if you're not sure, you know, along the way. Um, 
yeah, if we're trying to find the whole circuit, um, I mean, do you agree? Like, if I were to. It makes sense because it's like cosine. Theta yeah. Theta. Yeah, and cosine has it. You could think about like the period of cosine. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, it's, it was which is 2 pi. Two theta, then yeah, and actually, that's that's the one I wanted to show you here. Is one like, and actually, cosine 2 theta is not a great example, but um, uh, let me show you another one just, just to make sure that you, you guys are clear about this discussion, why it is actually not always obvious. So, uh, let, me, let me give you the Rose curve, R equals uh, 2 sine of. Uh, 3 theta. Ah, that's hard to fit up there. Okay, so su r equals 2 sine of 3 theta. I'd like to calculate the length of that curve. Okay. So this takes a little bit of thinking. This will be good. This will be our little fuller review, too. Like, first of all, can you remember how to construct this graph? Um, you want to step us through a little bit, please? So, since it has like an odd number in the, like in the parentheses, so yeah. three pedals. Yeah, there are three pedals. Can you find where they are? They're a blank. They're like two, right? Because the maximum r can ever be is two. And when does the first pedal occur? It's, it's like two pi over three. Yeah, like we want to think when does two sine theta, two sine of three theta, when does that actually equal two? That's the question, right? When does that happen? Um, and that happens when uh, sine of three theta is one, or when three theta is equal to what? pi over 2, and, and other things too, but let's just see when we find one pedal, okay? Um, when pi over 2, when this thing is, so that's when theta is equal to pi over 6, okay, we found a pedal, and then after that, we don't have to, there are lots of other ones, there are an infinite number of them actually that land in different places, right? Um, but uh, visually speaking, we only have three pedals, right? The first one is at pi over 6, so I think that's going to be somewhere out here, right? So two units out in this direction, it looks like that. Um, where else do we get a pedal? If there are three of them, and, they're, and this is pretty, and it is pretty, then they're equally spaced. And how often? Yeah, they're, they're spaced every 2 pi over 3, right? So every 120 degrees, right? Um, you get another one over here, another one down here, right? The way it, it's actually drawn is like this, right? Right? This is actually how you, how you would, how it would be traced out in your calculator if you were to draw it. Okay, so, all right, cool. That was a good discussion, Rose curve. But what maybe we didn't really emphasize when we taught you this stuff in free calculus is that uh, the following question is going to bring this, bring this very point up. What is the length of this curve? How would you find it? In particular, what's alpha and beta? And let's actually step through it more carefully. This is, in fact, the picture, but let's just step through it a little more carefully. When we're at pi over 6, we're here, right? When theta is pi over 3, where are we? We're back at the origin if theta is pi over 3, right? When, so we're sweeping along here. When we're at pi over 6, we're at, we have an r value of 2. When we're at pi over 3, we're back to here at 0. When we're at pi over 2, what's our r value? What is Two, what is 2 sine of 3 pi over 2? It's negative 2, isn't it? So actually when we're here, we're actually here, aren't we? When theta is pi over 2, r is negative 2. Okay, all right, beautiful. Uh, and then we come back to here, and then when theta is um, 5 pi over 6, we're here. And when theta is pi, we're here. And we're done. Do you see what just happened? Right? So how, what's alpha and beta? Zero and pi, actually, right? Is that, is that clear from just our discussion of how this curve was made? Feel free to graph this on your calculator polar board now, if you haven't already. Put in r equals 2 sine of 3 theta. And when you graph it, um, and actually, yeah, this is, we, have a, we have a few minutes. Let's do it, actually, because I think it's worth actually seeing uh, with your very own eyes.
Uh, yeah, any any pi piece of this will work, right? Any size of pi, of pi to two pi would work, right? But anything of size pi would work. Um, window zero to okay, I'll I'll keep it at zero to two pi. That's that's fine. Um, and I'd like to change this to a little ball here, just for fun. There we go. Okay, let's watch. Oh, that's so hard to see. Okay, well, hold up. Let's make this uh, negative three to three or something like that. And this negative three to three. All right, here we go. Let's try that again. Just exactly what we expected. Now watch carefully. Whoa, you see it happening? It's happening again, right? So maybe we have more than we need to. Let's go to window. Maybe we didn't know it need to go to 0 to, to 2 pi. Maybe we just need to go to 0 to pi. And in fact, that is, of course, all we need to do. There it is, right? So I just want to make sure you have this clear, in clear focus here that if you're finding length of the curve, then this kind of thing can come up. Um, didn't come up with this easy first example, but uh, you know, so you need to know your polar curves. Uh, that being said, what about, uh, tell me what you know about this graph. Do you know anything about that graph, where I changed this to a 2, so 3? It's also a rose curve. How many petals does it have? Yeah, OK, good. Uh, all right, so you did your reviewing yesterday. Good job. Um, it has four petals. Uh, what do you think alpha and beta would be if we're trying to find a length of this curve? Well, let's see what happens if we do 0 to pi. Zero to two pi, maybe. Okay, yeah. Zero to two pi is right here. So what's going on? Um, uh, if I don't know wh whether your precalculus told you that or not, but in this picture over here, there, are, there kind of are actually six petals, aren't there? It's just the second set of three land on top of the first set of three, right? Um, so that's why this is happening, and it has everything to do with like almost like a number theory reason because it's odd or even, right? Um, and you might ask, what if it's not odd or even? What if it's number like 2.15? Then what happens? <laughs> well, then you get uh, pictures like this. Where is it? There it is. Isn't that 2.15? That's a rose curve, kind of, right? But they don't land. Ev they don't really land it back on top of each other for a while, <laughs> for a long time, until you know. Um, if this is a rational number, then it, then eventually they do land back on top of each other. If this is an irrational number times theta in here then you get just a completely filled disk eventually. It's dense, it's completely dense disk if you let theta continue on forever. It never lands back on top of each other, really. Yeah, it kind of blows your mind, right? Didn't teach you that in pre-calculus. Anyway, um, so but anyway, it's important rather than to like think, oh, well, I have to remember that like uh, uh, Lima song can have an inner loop if, we, if A is greater than B. And better to have like a more, a higher perspective on this thing. And think, what is, what's actually happening? And like, what are we doing? And, um, yeah. Uh, so, if it's odd, then it's zero to pi, and even, then it's zero to right? Yeah, if you want, we will. Thanks for this interruption for a brief announcement. And then I don't know about this, this one. We have to like really think hard if we want to find a length of this curve, wouldn't we? Like really hard. Someone will maybe need to tell us. I don't know. <laughs> Come by for some courageous conversations at lunch. That's the people from power. <laughs> All right. So, um, oh, wait, wait. One more thing I want to tell you. Um, I mean, it won't kill you, but we broke the, the homework up into two smaller homeworks. So I hope you wrote this down. But this is a lot less homework that's on your sheet. So I'm, I'm, I'm saving you here. So. And then the other half, I'm going to give you the right. Okay. The people of empowerment is meeting in room two o six. So we used to do this only one day, two area as well. But we decided to split it up. And make it like really easier. If you were to like do all of the homework, that would be the end of the world. They won't understand all the areas. Hey, by the way, if anyone wants to come back, we have a magic math guy here coming for lunch today in my room. This warm-up? Is that what you said? Yeah, it's actually going to say